Excel 2016, Module 9, Part 2. We're going to do the first part of our amortization schedule in this part. So we're working with a loan, and in the last workbook, or we're in the last segment, we did our loan analysis. So now we're ready to do some additional updating to some of our other work worksheets. So we're going to go to Startup and we're going to go to B26. So our assumption is that we're going to have to borrow $400,000. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to the Loan Schedule and we're going to enter some information here. So in A5, we are going to enter a formula that goes back to our startup worksheet equals startup and selects the amount that we entered there for our long-term business loan. When you hit enter, it will bring the amount back. We are assuming that we can get that 5% loan we've been talking about. And we are also assuming that we're still going to be making quarterly payments, so four payments a year. We can then calculate the rate per quarter as we did in our loan analysis as the annual interest rate divided by the number of payments per year. We're going to be making these payments for five years and we're going to be making 20 payments then which is calculated as the number of years times the payments per year. So it's a good idea at the top of our loan amortization schedule to have the actual payment amount that we need. So we're going to use the financial function. Scroll down till we find PMT. And we're going to use the information on row 5. So we have the rate, which is in column D the number of payments or periods is in F, and then our present value is in A. You'll recall from our earlier discussion that the future value in a loan repayment is always going to be zero because I should have paid the loan completely off and I should not owe any more money. So we can leave that zero or blank and we can leave type blank unless we're told otherwise. So we get an annual or excuse me a quarterly payment of a little over or almost twenty three thousand. So the next thing we need to do as a business is we need to calculate how much of each payment is going to be principal and how much is going to be interest. The interest portion of our payment is the payment that we are paying the bank for allowing us to use their money. That is a business expense and it lowers your profit on your income statement. Now the principal payment, that is the portion of the month or the quarterly payment that we make that is actually reducing the amount of money that I owe. When we use these, we will have to be aware that we are going to copy 
these next formulas down. And so we need to make sure that we are paying attention to whether something needs to be a relative reference or an absolute. So we are going to come here into C9 and we're going to say equals the present value. That is the amount of the remaining principal when I get ready to make this payment. Now in D9, I'm going to be calculating the interest portion of my payment. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the financial formulas and I'm going to scroll down and find I PMT for interest payment. Now these boxes should look very familiar to you with the exception of one. So we're going to skip the one that does, is new and cover that last. So the rate we know is up here in D5. Now if I'm going to copy this formula down I do not want this cell to move. I want it to be absolute because if it moves down, then the rate would be zero the next time. So I need to put the dollar signs to fix it. I'm going to come over here into the number of periods and I'm going to find that over here on F5. Again, this has to be absolute because it cannot move or it will switch to zero. And the present value is also going to be up here on row five and that also needs to be absolute. You'll notice future value is zero, so that can stay blank. And we now have this scrolling bar because we can't see all the fields. So you always want to make sure if you see this scrolling bar, you look to see what else there is. Type we can leave blank. So we're going to go back up here to period. So what period means is it needs to know which payment number this is. It's going to be something between 1 and 20, but it needs to know which one this is because the way the loan payments work is in the first payment, it calculates the interest off of a $400,000 loan. But when I come to payment 2, I owe less than 400000 so when it computes the interest, it computes it on a lower amount. That lower amount causes there to be less interest. So your interest payment starts out high and goes low. Your principal payment starts out low and gets higher as the life of the loan changes. Okay, so you have to tell it which period. We are on, for this payment, payment one. You can see in this column of numbers, they are sequential numbers, one through twenty, so we can use that as our payment number. We do not want that to be absolute. It needs to be relative so that when I go down another row, it's going to look at the value 2 instead of the value 1. So that is the portion of my payment that's going to be interest. So let's calculate the principal payment. So we're going to go up to financial 
and you're going to scroll down and find PPMT or principal payment. You'll notice these fields are identical. So I am going to choose the rate, make it absolute. I'm going to choose the period, leave it relative. The number of periods that needs to be absolute. So we'll add the dollar signs. And then finally, the loan balance. And we will add the dollar signs. Remembering to scroll down and make sure I haven't missed anything. And then I click OK. So you can see the two formulas have exactly the same parameters in them. The only difference is Excel knows by the function that we use that it should calculate either the principal or the interest. To calculate the total payment, we're going to add together the interest portion of our payment plus the principal payment. And what you want to make sure is that this payment amount is equal to this one up here. So now let's figure out how I determine the remaining loan balance for the next payment. So the way you calculate your loan amount is you start out with the principal, the period before, and you're going to reduce the loan amount by the principal payment. Since the principal payment is showing as negative, you have to add. If your principal amount starts increasing, you know you have done it wrong. All right, now let's copy these three formulas down one row and we can check to see if our absolute referencing and relative referencing worked. And you can see that they were consistent with what I expected to happen. I expected to see the interest go down, the principal go up, and the total payment stay the same. So let's fill in the rest of our chart. So if I highlight the remaining balance formula all the way across to the total payment, I can drag that down using autofill to all 20 payments. Now the one problem I have is that I just lost all the lines. So one thing you want to make sure you do is you click this autofill options and say fill without formatting. Now it puts those dollars back in. The final balance, you can copy the formula down one more time. And you want to again fill without formatting. And now you can see that the loan balance came down to zero. The next two functions we will be working on are to fill out this cumulative amount and calculate how much total interest and principal we pay each year. And that's going to be in the next segment. So what we're going to do now is we're going to save our work. And then I will see you for the next segment.